know, some people, when they get a streak of bad luck, they go and commit suicide. Or they make a pathetic attempt at committing suicide. And they become a failure at that. After which nobody's got any use for them, which is only natural and correct. Because if they knew what they were doing, they would be right here with you and me, down in the bottom of this slime-encrusted vault where they keep the imaginary diseases. Now, you must understand that a disease is not everybody's idea of a good time. Any fool can see that. But an imaginary disease has a very useful social function. An imaginary disease is something that is designed to get you over the hump when you need to smooth out a lump in some bumpy, funky, sociological situation. Now you remember that in the olden days, when there was somebody that you wanted to get to dismiss from your presence, you would say, shit, I've got a headache. But now that everybody is so cosmic and evolved, you can't fool them with the, the headache story anymore. You see, they're far too alert for that. That's why we have imaginary diseases. Now, we've got some fantastic bargains down here, even for the people who think they've seen it all right over in our terminal department. Right this way, folks. Now over beside me in bubbling flask number one is a malady that's sure to cause some talk in contemporary mixed company. When you tell your friends you have this disease, not only will they be uh, impressed that you were so candid, but they'll talk about you later. And they'll say you were really hip to warn them bluntly that you had gas. to have audience participation in there. That's not a very good gas bomb. One more time. That's much better. Now, suppose the gas don't get it. Suppose the people that you're telling that you have gas still want to borrow money from you. What can you do in a case like that? The answer is simple. You go over to bubbling flask number two. And in that beaker, there's another disease that might come in handy for you, even in San Diego. Now, this... This preparation was compounded especially from secret ingredients that were dredged up from the Logan Heights processing, sewage processing center. Now, inside of this flask, if you just reach your hand in, pull out a little wad of the ooze that's inside and smear it all, all around your neck and on your forehead, your arms and everything. And then you just turn around to those people who are unimpressed with your gas and tell them you got a rash. Now suppose these people remain unimpressed by both the gas and the rash. What do you do then? That's simple. You just go over to beaker number three. Now this is a gourmet disease. This is so secret, we keep it disguised over with an Akadama label on the bottle, so nobody knows what's really inside. But the contents are very special. The contents of this jug, well, I'll tell you what's in it. It's the biological missing link between that most geometrically intriguing of all of nature's creations, the crystal, and your regular disease-producing amoeba-like bacteria. This is a heavy disease. This disease is so deep that it may even have to go nameless. This may be the nameless disease of the sports aroma. This may be the disease that each and every one of you, deep down in his heart, must fear and despise. This must be the disease that has caused free clinics to spring up all over our great land. This is the disease that'll help you get rid of unwanted company faster 
and more economically than even the new moist pet food packets. I'll give you a clue, it's some kind of virus. Oh, my God. 